It's time to dish with the Paddock Prince. It's an off week on the Derby Trail, but plenty to catch up on following the Tampa Bay Derby. 100-point races start next week. Mr. Levich, uh, we had a little drama in the aftermath of the Tampa Bay Derby. Not everyone liked Tampa Trice's furious closing kick as much as I did. I think you're more in my camp than others. Yeah, I am. I don't. I, it wasn't the most impressive race in terms of buyer speed figures, but like you said, a lot of horses don't do that at Tampa. And I mean, turning for home, that horse looked dead, like he wasn't going to get anything. And then about midway through the stretch, he just kicked it in and really accelerated down the lane. I mean, he didn't beat the best field. He didn't get the best figure. He's obviously going to have to break better because the Derby is going to be a 20 horse field, but I'm not off him yet. I need to see another race. I want to see his race in the bluegrass first, because if he comes back and let's say he runs a 96 or a 97 and he wins the race, then everybody's going to be right back on him. So hmm. I want to see another race from him, but he definitely has gate issues and it's hard to, that's hard to deal with in a 20 horse field if he gets to the Derby. Yeah. I definitely found that, like some people couldn't separate liking the Tampa Bay Derby. And by like, for me, that just means he won. I, I mean, there are plenty of horses in that spot, favored or not, who do not win. No, they, not at all. And you also got to think too. Far the back, they get used too early, whatever. So he got the job done. Now, just because you're like, oh, wow, that was impressive. He was able to win a race that didn't look like he'd win on the far turn. That doesn't mean he's my derby pick. Like, I don't understand why people can't separate – appreciating one race and then thinking that, yeah, okay, maybe they're going to be an underlay in eight weeks or seven weeks, whatever it is. So yeah, I'm with you. Let's see what happens next. And he's fairly inexperienced. That was his first race going two turns, um, new track. I mean, obviously Keeneland's going to be a different track for him, but I got to see more from him. He, um, I don't, I mean, you got to think too, Forte's the Derby favorite right now. He's obviously Absolutely. a very good horse. But at the same time, it's not like the, he can't and Tappa Trice can't improve out of this race into the bluegrass, be more professional. I'm sure Pletcher's going to work on his gate stuff. He might just be a horse that doesn't want to break. But if he can get more professional, I mean, I don't know why people are going to jump off so early. But you know how Twitter is in horse racing. They, they're a, it's a next day sport. So next time he runs, if he runs well, everybody will be on him. Right. Now, I will say – I don't love anyone behind him. So I, I definitely get the rub of, okay, who do he beat? I mean, I've seen some people talk about classic car wash, actually no ran the better race. No shot that he run a better no race than Tappa Trice. No. Not even close. He was never a threat to win. Uh, the Mott behind him, I would say maybe he has the most upside just because I kind of thought he got going later than needed and, and maybe caught the most traffic because he actually tried to save ground. But um I mean, either one would be a deserving bomb, absolute bomb going forward against Forte, against Practical Move. We'll get to your top 10, but uh, I'm with you. I just, other than Tappa Trice, there's no one I want out of that race. No, I don't like anybody in that race. I think Classic Legacy, the model horse, is a horse to watch. He's obviously the half to art collector, so he's got a big pedigree, so he might get better as time goes along. But right now, he's more of a West Virginia. They're more West Virginia Derby types, I feel like. Right. right. Mid level. Well, and you uh, certainly uh, back it up with uh, the top 10. Tappa Trice third, no one else from that race uh, among your top contenders. But for those who watched last week, you did drop Tappa Trice. And I have to agree, um, it, it's not that he necessarily did anything wrong. He won. He overcame obstacles to do it. But Forte coming back off that Breeders' Cup and getting a good figure to boot, to me, definitely makes him the the top contender. And the thing about Forte was it was so impressive. That was his first start, obviously, since the Breeders' Cup. But he's on a if, – if you read Pretcher's quotes and just kind of how it's going, he looks like he's on a perfect three-race plan. He's going to go from the Fountain of Youth, which he won easily. Then he'll go to the nine furlongs in the Florida Derby. Let's say he wins that with another good race. He's on a perfect two-race prep going into the Derby. So it just looks like the – Stars are aligning for him to be the Derby favorite. I think Practical Move is the best horse in California at the moment. Obviously, I dropped Tabitrice Trice a little bit because he didn't run the best figure, but he still won, so he's definitely one to keep watching with a lot of talent. But I think number four on my list, Go Rocket Ride, is very interesting because there is not much speed signed on right now, and he ran a very good race second time out in the um, San Felipe. He's coming back in the San Anita Derby, which will only be his third start. He got the two turns. So I think Go Rocket Ride, I think I'm saying that right, is a horse to watch. And then I threw Skinner on there, who came third in the San Felipe. So I think the San Felipe right now is probably the 
best prep race I've seen so far as a whole from top to bottom. Yeah, hard to disagree uh, among the top three. That was a race National Treasure uh, scratched out of. He's back on the trail. I don't love when horses miss. Uh, it miss races for sure. Uh, definitely a red flag. Maybe it's early enough since he has a foundation uh, that he can run back to that would make him competitive and then move forward. But uh, I, I agree with you. I mean, practical move, I think, is interesting. Uh, certainly go rocket ride. Skinner, I would say, is, is the one knowing that he's the longest price of those three right now. I'd be most interested in betting. Uh, but agree with you, the San Felipe uh, has the look of a key race going forward. So uh, the next big uh, thing is next week, uh, we'll get into the Louisiana Derby, which uh, I think they've already drawn maybe, but pretty soon. But <laughs> we will uh, 100 points to the winner. Jeff Ruby is the same. So a big week next week with those two 100 pointers. We're really runner up. You're in uh, just finishing second gives you enough points typically. Uh, so I'm eager to, to see what we think of those. But uh, any thoughts on the, the Cox Brigade coming back? I saw you have a couple of his on the bottom half of your top 10. Well, hit shows the, the bottom of the top half. Uh, and then Instant Coffee we're looking forward to seeing. Uh, I believe it's Hit Show staying in New York. Yeah, so Hit Show's going to the wood, last I saw. Then you have Instant Coffee who won the um, the first prep in Louisiana. The Look, Riz, Not the Riz, whatever the first one is. He won – yeah, he won the first one. So he's coming back in the Louisiana Derby. And then he has a couple of – I think he has Tappet's Conquest, and he's not on my list. But the thing about Cox's horses are I feel like they all have the same running style. Hit Show, Instant Coffee, Angel of Empire. They're all, like, grinded out closers. So it's going to be interesting to see how they run in their last preps. I think Instant Coffee – I mean, I mean, Hit Show, sorry, has the most – I like Hit Show the best out of the Cox horses. Obviously, the Wood Memorial hasn't produced a lot of Derby winners lately, obviously, but they did win the Preakness in Belmont last year, so it was a decent race enough last year, I'd say. So I think Hit Show is one to watch in the Wood, and then Instant Coffee's coming back in the Louisiana Derby. But in the Louisiana Derby, Kings Barnes, who's not on my list, will be in that race. A two-for-two Pletcher horse that is very intriguing. The New York path to the Derby has not had a horse hit the board – in the points era, uh, staggering. Uh, one thing I is that ten years, yeah, 2013. So yeah, this is this That's is uh, the 11th year. So yeah, we've had ten. Um, obviously, one of those years was was somewhat of an anomaly with with COVID. One thing I did comment to uh, colleagues, former colleague Scott Shapiro, uh, is maybe one thing people don't realize is back in the day with the wood, uh, it's always been a final prep. But back when, the 2000s, when horses like Fusaichi, Pegasus, Monarchos were coming out of the wood, the Louisiana Derby and the Florida Derby were both not final preps. Now they are. So the, you know, the, the sort of net of horses coming to the Derby, there's more final prep, so to speak. And I think that has hurt the wood. Uh, they just don't get, like Funny Side and Empire Maker both ran in Louisiana and Florida, respectively, then came to the wood. So that yeah. just doesn't happen anymore. So I think it, it has hurt the race, as you noted. But every year is different. I agree with you. I like Hit Show the best of the Coxes. Um, things are about, I think, going to get really interesting because Forte, to me, is clearly the favorite. And then after that, depending on what practical move does, we may have two top choices and then everyone else. Yeah, and it's so interesting because it, like a month ago, Baffert, it felt like Baffert's horse. He had like 20 horses, yeah. and then all of a sudden it's like reincarnates like the only one left and maybe National Treasure. Obviously, they're not with Baffert at the moment, but right. so it just it felt like there was 20 options, and now there's down to like one and a half, I think. I don't know if I'm missing anybody. Reincarnated, maybe National Treasure if he makes it. You going to head up to Turfway? I'm thinking about it. I haven't been in a while, and I haven't. Have you been since? I'm sure you've been I've since been, they yeah. redid it. It's it's different. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been since get, they get redid a ticket it, if so. you're going for Ruby Day. I'm th yeah. We looked. I'm thinking about it. I think um, I think the two fills is running in that race. The horse that ran in yep. the Risen Star, and I think Fletcher sent in Major Dude. So it looks like some good horses and jockeys and trainers would be on hand for. And it's seven hundred thousand now. Yeah, big time. Have some big races to look forward to, and we'll dish then. Yep, absolutely. We got um, Gulfstream all week, and then we're going to throw in some – Jason Perry will be doing some basketball selections for the March Basket, Madness. I like it. NCAA, Oops. I assume. Yep, hoops and horses.
So we're going I like it. So who's going to win it all? I uh, think I'm going to ride with Houston. I got them in the championship. I got Purdue winning, and I know Purdue never wins. They always are good. They always flunk in the tournament or whatever you want to say. But this is the year for Purdue and Matt Painter to get it done. I'm going All for right. Purdue. The Boilermakers. We'll see. we'll see. Yeah. Houston's good, though. So you have Purdue and Houston in the championship. Yeah. I got a lot of upsets early on. But when do you have UK losing? First round. Nice. That's what – That's. Yeah. That's what makes it a good tournament for me. The, yeah, we'll get the them out of there early because I'm pretty sure Providence's best player played for Kentucky last year. I, um, I can't think of his name, but I'm pretty sure that his their best player was on Kentucky last year, and he didn't get a lot of run. Goes to Providence, and he's their best player. It's I got Providence, and then I got Coach Patino. We got him knocking out UConn in the first round. I like it. All right. So. Well, I'm going to get into your bracket. I won't pick Purdue winning at all because you're better than me in the other round, so I need to be contrarian somewhere. Yeah, don't. If you want to win, don't pick Purdue because that means, you, <laughs> yeah, means I would win. Right. I'd have to beat you in all the other games. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it. So, All right. He's the uh, Paddock Prince. Plenty of sheets this weekend, hoops and horses. We'll be back next week to talk Louisiana Derby.